Thanks for staying with us on News Hub, and this is Home Norn on the show today. As we take a look at the floods across the country and the controversies that they have brought, especially between the federal uh, government, of course, and the Ministry of Humanitarian Disasters and Management, so to speak, and the Bayelsa State, uh, the caucus of the House of Representatives of uh, the caucus, I beg your pardon, from the south, south part of the country in the House of Representatives, calling for the resignation of the minister over her uh, announcement that Bayelsa State wasn't even part of the top 10 states across the Federation that were worst hit by floods across the country. Uh, we're taking a look at this with uh, an environmental rights action as well as pro program manager, uh, that's Alago Morris, program manager, environmental rights action, who joins us uh, virtually from Bayelsa State. Alago, thank you very much for being part of News House today. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. I'm reaching out from Yenegua. Incidentally, I'm seeing. Uh, 2023. Have they given us a flood alert for 2023? Uh, we, we got that. But before we delve straight into that, uh, can you give us uh, an update on the flooded areas across Bayelsa, especially uh, where you are in Yenugua? It's okay. Uh, we are still in uh, 2022. So I'm seeing 2023 flood alert. Yeah, and I pray. Uh, 2023 shouldn't come like 2022 because uh, in this part of the world or the country we have not seen this type of monster elephantine flood before the one that uh, came in 1969 I was about nine years and I experienced it in the creeks of southern Nigeria by then part of old river state so when that of 2012 came uh, everybody made reference to that of 1969 and that of 2012 was higher but the current one that is receding now is really really way higher than all that even maybe our forefathers didn't see and it has caused quite a lot of damage to infrastructure damage to road we've not talked we're not talking about the east west road yet that has denied by elsa from receiving goods from outside the state. And so uh, the cost of living has gone really, really high. I used to buy well uh, for generator about 3,000 highest. But now I buy fuel, 1,000 Naira, you know, just to make sure our phones are on and then we watch news on, on TV. So things are really, really hard. Not to talk about food items because uh, farmlands have been destroyed, livestock died, uh, uh, poultry farmers have lost quite a lot. What about fish farmers? Fish farmers, all their fishes have escaped. Uh, traders lost goods in their stores, like beans, rice, gari, and the rest of them. Uh, roads have been cut up here in Bayelsa State. All the three senatorial roads have suffered cutting damage of road, major infrastructure. And even the roads that are under construction, a road linking an area called Ibogene and the Sani Abasha Road here in Yenegua, uh, the whole area is flooded and equipment are just lying down there in idle, wasting away. Uh, I can tell you that the road leading to Amasoma, where we have a primary and premier university, the Nigeria Delta University, got cut. In two, in three places, major, major damage uh, to that road. The road leading to the first oil well where we had commercial uh, drilling of uh, crude oil in in West Africa, the Ogba local government area. We have two major roads leading to that area, completely destroyed and flooded. So now, for you to access that area, which will also lead you to two other local government areas like Nembe and Brass. For you to go to Brass, you have to pass through this other side, get to Nembe and take boats to Brass. So now for you to do that, you have to go far 
pass through another junction, enter River State before you get into a bare local government and make a journey. And this now gives you longer journey, more fuel, make the uh, travel more expensive and frustrating. Mm. So as we speak, yeah. uh, a lot of people are taking ill, uh, people are hungry, and people are going home. Uh, a lot of things have just dis been destroyed. If you talk about suffering, yes, deaths, people have lost lives too here in Bayelsa State. We saw what happened in Benway and Kogi State. It's a very sad situation, a very sad commentary. Uh -huh. But it is worse here because this is where the, the whole volume of, crude, uh, of uh, water is coming to empty into the Atlantic Ocean. And Bayelsa State is having the longest stretch of the Atlantic coastline. No state in Nigeria has that type of stretch. Bayelsa is having the largest, longest stretch on the Atlantic coastline with several rivers. And our communities are settled along river banks. And every community is affected in all the local, co local government areas. Okay. The only local government area that would have been safe, part of Southern Niger, part of local government that are along the fringes of the Atlantic Ocean, Fortunately, this year, people in that fringes of the Atlantic Ocean are also complaining of their area being flooded. So okay. all eight local government areas are seriously affected. Right. Where most of people got refuge is either on the road or in school buildings that have a little bit of elevation. All, all right. communities uh, submerged. Even in Yanagua, the state capital, mm -hmm. over 5 percent of the land area was submerged. I was also a victim. Our office, the Environmental Rights Action Office, was flooded. My residence was flooded. I slept on table for, for two, three days before my landlord had to provide somewhere else for us to relocate. We just okay. came back about a few days ago to the office to do cleanup and then uh, reoccupation. So uh, we are all IDPs, uh, but that will not stop us as environmental groups to continue the advocacy to ensure that the government, because we are putting this back on the government, flooding is not new in this part of the world. All right. we'll it is not new, there. it is part of our environment. All right, Mr. Alago, yes. um, so, Maurice, for the purpose of this program, let's break it down one after the other. That was why I allowed for you to just uh, bear your mind because you're there, you can feel it. It's much easier for you and relatable than uh, reporters are looking around, or for instance, the accusation leveled against the Minister for uh, Humanitarian Affairs and Disaster Management, as well as uh, Social Development, Ajia Shadia Farouk. Um, let's take this report. I'd like for us to take a look at the House of Rep caucus uh, that have called for the resignation of the Minister, as well as the, the fact that federal government should sack her uh, because of uh, underreporting what happened in Bayelsa State. Uh, let's take a look at that, then we'll dwell more on that and see how the state and others that have been affected can mitigate uh, the possible occurrence of flooding come 2023. We, the Niger Delta members of the House of Representatives, strongly and unequivocally condemn in strong terms the statement credited to the Honorable Minister as insensitive, unpatriotic, and unnationalistic. We are talking of human beings fellow Nigerians are not some aliens. The figures are not only an insult to the good people of Bayelsa State, but to all the victims of the flood who has gone through trauma of braving the elements by sleeping outside on dug out canoes, rooftops, and flood water floors. We call on the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development to honorably resign her appointment as a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. She has uh, been cast as someone who is above the law. We as lawmakers cannot stand here and condone or expect any kind of condemnation for a human being, a minister for that matter, an appointee, to exhibit conduct that shows that she's above the law. This expression that um, came out from her the other day, I'm not all of us. Personally, I'm offended in my constituency in um, uh, River State. I know how much I've expended in terms of personal resources. I've been to the areas affected, whether through water, went to various camps to supply materials from my own pocket. While the woman sits there somewhere and pretends that 
uh, Jigawa is the most affected. She has not paid a visit to anyone else. Sir. She can display this gross incompetence, especially as regards to the lives of Nigerians within the Niger Delta environment that contribute enormously towards the sustenance of this country's economy. We have asked her to honorably, honorably resign, give way. And where she fails, Mr. President, she just do the needful. All right, so those were the words of the reps there, really calling for the resignation of the Minister for uh, Humanitarian Affairs and Disaster Management and Social Development in the country, Sharia Farouk, for underreporting what happened in Bayesa State with regards to uh, the floods and flooding that the state experienced. Uh, is actually, uh, we hear it's receding at this point in time in 2022. Uh, Alagwa, it's still nice to have you on the program. How would you describe the stand of the House of Rep, uh, Reps members? You, do you think that uh, it is a timely call or a worthy one at that? Well, thank you very much. In uh, a civilized climb, uh, pardon my word, my, my statement, uh, why take it? In a civilized climb, she would just resign on her own because initially she made a statement that only four local governments were affected in Bayelso State. And after some reactions, she went back to say seven states or uh, seven local governments were affected in Bayelso State. And now, she has made this other statement. It is most unfortunate. When Bielsons heard that comment from the minister, the honorable minister, we were all really, really, off. we took offense. And we went to our social media handles. I also made serious comments to that effect. I took exception to it that what she said was unacceptable and that we should stop doing desktop uh, 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 ministerial duties. By the way, her ministry ought to have gotten an office and enough adequate staff here in Bayelso State, knowing that this is a terminal point where water coming all the way from the Guinea Island, uh, the highlands in Guinea, the Futajelen Island, up to Cameroon, releasing their water and all of that. Come here. She ought to have a functional office here in Bayelso State with adequate staff that will give you know practical uh, evidence-based information to them not just stopping not just stopping and so if the national assembly members from the niger delta have taken this step i think it is a step in the right direction because we would have also been calling on them to do the report and so it is a welcome development whether she resigns or not we have seen uh, that it is a very difficult thing in Africa for our people to resign moderately. So uh, it wouldn't be a surprise if it sits tight but right. that she ought to have resigned, having goofed on this issue again and again. And, and that's there. Uh, we do hope that uh, the, the Bayesa government and her ministry will find a way around this because in all of this, it's not all about the fight. It's about... Uh, getting the right things done, protecting the lives and property of people all over the country as, as, a, as an issue of rights. We have the right to feel safe and secure within a country as the citizens. But um, it is what it is at this point in time. And another alert has been issued for the year 2023. I'd like for you to talk about this dispassionately because if we don't separate it, we may not be able to really get to the root of how we can prevent what uh, happened this year uh, in 2023. What would you say uh, the government of Bayelsa State itself should be doing, uh, bearing in mind what the people are going through at this point in time, to ensure that there's no repeat in 2023? Well, of course, uh, uh, I will go to Bayelsa State, but I will come to the federal government too. Uh, uh, when Chief Melford Okilo was the governor of Old River State, the area we now occupy as Bielsa was a typical rural uh, setting. And yet, 
The Chief Melfordo Kilo administration of Old River State reached out to this area and touched almost every community in one way or the other, not only through his independent power project, but through thoughts first, canalization, shoreline protection, uh, reclamation of land, and some feeling of communities. And communities uh, in some few local government areas be a safe haven during the 2012 monster flood. That community was safe. Other communities came there for refuge. This is a, a, an example of what Bayelsa State Government can that yesterday the governor presented his board here and a part of it is talking about the establishment of a flood and erosion directorate that will deal with this issue head on. In, at the state level, and the environmental rights action has been advocated for the establishment of the of a flood and erosion commission since 2018. And so, if the governor the budget and saying a directorate will be set up for flood and erosion, this is a very welcome development, and I think it's an advocacy coming through for us. It's a delight. Having said that, I will also want the governor and who suffered same thing to follow up the Mr. President's pronouncement to meet with the Minister of Water Resources or whoever to ensure that they look for solution, identify the issues, and government to take action. Then, I am still surprised that the media has not shown us that Dashi Aousa Dam that was started in the early 80s by the Shagari administration. That dam that was supposed to be as a chalk absorber, if the Cameroonians release water from Lado Dam. And so I had expected that by now we'll be seeing drone uh, shown uh, environment of that dam that they say has been suspended of about 80% completion. So I want the federal government, I join my voice with other well meaning Nigerians, to urge the federal government to go back to the drawing board to ensure that the Darcy. Oh, Mr. Alagua, we do, Maurice, we do hope to reconnect with you because that line very important for you to land on it so we can get uh, in clearer terms. Uh, for many Nigerians, when the, flash of, uh, the flooding really took over, many were uh, saying it should be the Lacto Dam uh, released uh, from in Cameroon, while others would say, oh, maybe it actually wasn't. Maybe uh, Nymet already warned us at the beginning of this year of impending uh, floods across the country and the state should have been able to take charge of that. Uh, it's also very heartwarming for a lot of people to hear that the Bayelsa State Government is taking it upon itself in a very different manner. Uh, I mean to react to what's going on this year to mitigate uh, the possible occurrence next year so that it doesn't uh, become something that Bayelsans will be worried about all the time and they may not be sleeping with their eyes closed. That's not what we're looking forward to. So uh, I hope that I'll be able to get across to you before uh, we leave on the show today. That's what I hear, uh, Kogi State, so other states, Jigawa, we also heard, uh, was very affected by the floods. What about other states who didn't really feel it as much as all these other states uh, that are groaning? What are those things that state governments are putting in place to ensure that it does not get to them Many a times we see things happening or impending issues that we have to quickly act fast. Uh, we have to quickly act, I beg your pardon, so that we don't get our people to experience a loss of lives and property because of our actions or inactions. So it's also calling on all state governments across the state to judicially, judiciously spend the ecological fund so that the people won't die, properties won't be destroyed, and they won't be groaning and crying uh, over things that could have easily been prevented. Mr. Alagua Morris, uh, it's nice to have you back on the show. We have to wrap up at this point in time. So uh, right now, just as you said, by the state government, really on table, in paper, has a plan to ensure that it prevents what happened this year. Uh, what about the people of Bayelsa State? Are they getting into the mix of what is going on? What are you hearing from the people? 
what we hear is lamentation, hunger, suffering. And uh, if there's anything our people can do or learn from this monster flood, is if we have taken measurement and encouraged ourselves to learn how to elevate uh, our buildings. Unfortunately, most of our people are poor and they build mud houses. Mm. And so that is another challenge. If the government, the state and local government, would also concentrate uh, poor people, small huts they live in, if we can encourage low-cost housing for our people, even at the community levels, you know, that will help us with properly uh, elevated structures, GPCs, and uh, the road networks uh, are taken into consideration. That will help. But like I said, Bayelsa State is not, flood is not new to Bayelsa State. We expect it every year between June and November or end of October, but not this monster flood. Even those normal floors, we have been thinking of how we will be able to survive them. How much more this monster flood, and that is why we want to call on the federal government interventionist agencies, the presidency, uh, international development partners to come in to help us uh, what, with whatever the little the state government uh, is prepared to do to ensure that no longer lost from preventable flooding in this part of the world. All Not right. only lives, businesses, as we speak, by Essex State is on, they just came back from the civil service two weeks holiday. Related to this flood, there are six weeks primary and secondary school holiday because of this flood. And uh, a lot of uh, workshops, artisans, there are places of the business have been flooded. So they are not working. People are just idle and they, they must eat. So you can imagine, that is why most of most people are crying, especially as the, 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 the state is cut off from the rest of the country and things are, are high in terms of cost of uh, prices, goods and services. So please need help, Bayelsa need help, international and from the national. And the, talking about the ecological fund, what the presidency al al alleged that they have been releasing ecological fund to states, we have not heard in Bayelsa State that the Ecological Fund has ever been released to our state in recent time. Maybe in the past six, eight, nine years, we've not heard. So if the federal government is saying they are releasing the Ecological Fund, they should prove it, they should publish it, let us see it. So okay. that all our people, our state government accountable. We want to know what they have been using the Ecological Funds for because there is no state government uh, known uh, flood and erosion control project. State. Meanwhile, these are twin major ecological problems we're having in Bayelsa State. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Alagwa Maurice, the Program Manager, Environmental Rights Action. We thank you for your time and thoughts on News Hub today. All right. Yeah, Release the, the, the documents. All right. Uh, to see. I what? think uh, I, I think that's how much we'll be able to take today, Mr. Alagwa Maurice. We thank you for your time and thoughts once again on the program. And so uh, for those who are not, uh, Lagos is also below sea level. Some other states are elevated, but the activities of the residents there could constitute flooding if care is not taken. So don't dump your refuse into the drainages. Teach your children how to protect the environment so it does not fight us. And we're supposed to be friends with it. Please, let's keep it at that. And the ecological fund, uh, the, the federal government had said it was going to beam the searchlight into how that's been spent over the years. And we're waiting for that report. If monies are given to really prevent people from falling when disasters come, they should be judiciously spent and the people should be able to benefit and not suffer in the midst of plenty. And that's the show today. We want to thank all our resource persons for being part of News Hub, all our callers. To you for watching, we really appreciate you. And uh, Harry is inviting you again to join us tomorrow morning when we hope to bring you another very lovely package of the show. So on behalf of the entire production crew, I wish you a very beautiful day. I'm Shun Oyedeji. Good morning.